I just ask that as we go forth today with our families, Lord, that it'll be all about you, God. Um, and I'm going to be, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Um, I looked over and um, he was laying there. He was not under the car at all. Hang on, I'll go on to the next message. I walked up to him and felt for a pulse in five places. Um, he had no chest compressions. Um, and I thought he was gone. At which point I walked over to the other kid and he was freaking out. Um, Welcome to the fold where it's refined and sound of mind. So my name is Anthony, and I'm a bold believer in Jesus, not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. So I'm not here today to tell you God is good and God is great. I don't know who you are. I don't know your circumstances, so I'm not going to mess around. I am here today to ask you, Trust and obey in God's goodness. Trust and obey in God's greatness. See, April 13th, 2020, transformed my whole entire life, especially my Christian life. But before I get to that, let's go back a little bit to 2017. I was losing my mind, strung out on drugs, suicidal, tried taking my life twice. My wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, kicked me out. My dad was getting sick and dying. I didn't know what to do. I had the world on my shoulders. I kept getting arrested, going in and out of jail. I became who I hated in the streets right i became a tweaker so my dad dies 2017 i was sitting in the hotel room full of cucarachas and bed bugs and i was sitting up in bed reflecting what's gonna happen what's next who's gonna take care of my family who's gonna take care of my mom so i looked in there and I see my dad's Bible. I open it up. I start reading it. And I'm like, wait a minute. Some of these scriptures, I know I've highlighted in my, in my Bible. So then I run to go get my Bible. I start comparing the two. Some of the same scriptures he's highlighted, I've highlighted in my own Bible. So at that moment, at that point, I didn't stop. I kept going. I kept reading and reading and reading. It wasn't easy, man. But I believe that was the moment I was truly born again in 2017. So a few years go by. I joined a motorcycle ministry. I meet a brother. He invites me to a Bible study, Soldiers of the Cross, right? Great men of God, great powerful men of God. So I go, I fell in love with it. And this was for me, a rebel, an outcast, a nobody. So as I joined the ministry, I, God's just moving in my life. I go forth. I push the kingdom. I, I go across the world. I do local ministry. I do world ministry. I do so much for the kingdom of God. 
I get blessed with the motorcycle. I begin riding. I begin riding. My dad was always in the motorcycle scene, you know. And then uh, I said, you know what? I'm going to buy my own. I get blessed with a, a great job. I start working, working, working. And I get my life right. I'm fully walking my path. Of righteousness I seek after God I continue to to push forward when times aren't easy times are tough you know but I have great brothers I have great accountability around me So I get a brand new motorcycle, 2019. It was a 2020 soft to low rider. Harley brings back the low rider. So I get a brand new bike. So it's just amazed with the feeling I was going through. I bought something with my own hand. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I do is write down the Bible study. Cut them baffles out. Make it sound like a real butt. And then some time goes by. I save up some money. And I buy a 2-in-1 exhaust pipe TBR Twin Brothers Racing. So I take it down to a buddy's house. We put it on. I wait a few days. Easter. I go to a buddy's house for a sunrise service at Soldiers of the Cross. Watch a beautiful sunrise. Start a beautiful day with my family, barbecue, Easter egg hunt. That's the last thing I remember. And then the next thing I remember is I wake up, I can't see really. It's all cloudy, shadows everywhere. I can't move. I try my hardest, I can't. I can't even talk. I was terrified. I thought I was dead. But I can hear, and I hear beep, 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 beep. So I knew I was in the hospital. I knew at that moment my bike was gone. And I was so confused. I didn't know what was going on. I had a brain injury. I suffered two strokes. I broke my neck. A compound fracture in my right arm. I shattered my pelvis. Uh, blood clots, pneumonia, broken ribs. The list goes on and on. Injury after injury so they're doing surgery on my pelvis and they left me wide open I guess I end up getting what's called fistulas holes in my intestines they sew me back up and they don't know what's going on with me I'm getting fevers infections so they cut me back open sure enough I have holes in my intestines So finally, when I come to, um, I mean, I'm normal. My brain is functioning right. I'm clear headed, you know. I know I'm in the hospital. I know I'm in a major motorcycle accident. I can't move. My wife is the only one to see me because this is during COVID. And she would come in faithfully day after day after day. Did you pray? Did you pray? And I couldn't even talk. And all I thought was in my head, it's like, I don't want to pray. I don't want nothing to do with God. Because remember, I was a born again believer pushing the kingdom of God. So that was the last thing on my mind was God. I'm sitting in the hospital bed. I can't move. I can't see. I can't talk.
And then finally, no matter what, no matter what, God showed up. He was still in places. He was still on the TV. He was still with people, my nurses, my wife, daily. Pray without ceasing. I had the brothers, remember, no one can come see me but my wife. So I had the brothers from Soldiers of the Cross line up outside of the hospital. Outside of the hospital and pray for me. And the power of prayer. So I'm sitting there and I said, okay, God, I'm going to pray, you know. I can't talk, so I'm praying in my head. Why, God, why? Why did this happen? I was serving you. I was pushing the kingdom. And I heard that small, still whisper. Because I want to be intimate with you. Exodus 9, 16. Like Moses in the Red Sea, God? So my wife looks it up and it says, Indeed, for this reason I have allowed you to remain in order to show you my power and to proclaim my name throughout all the earth. What? That was written around 1400 BC. That's 1400 years before Christ was even born, before the word became flesh and dwelt among us so i had to dive deep i had to research it i read the whole book of exodus and that book man is all about god's sovereignty so the word i was pulling out of the text there was god's sovereignty so the lord tells moses this is during the 10 plagues and the lord tells moses go to pharaoh and say that Exodus 9.16. So it really blew my mind. Because I wasn't sinning. I was pushing the kingdom. I was living a righteous life. Trying my hardest to be conformed to the image of Christ. And I go through this crazy accident. So what was it teaching me? I had to go to Romans chapter 8. And hold strong to the promises of God. No matter what was going on. My dad dying. Me getting stabbed. In and out of jail on drugs and gangs. This accident. All things work for the good. Of those who love God. And called according to his purpose. Called according to his purpose. Is he willing to show me off like that showbread that's sitting in the temple? Is he willing to show me off? Because I love God, but am I able to be showed off by God, by my heavenly father? Is he that proud of me? And then you go on to the next verse. Am I being conformed to the image of his son, of Jesus Christ? Because if that is happening, if he can show me off, he's proud of me, and I'm being conformed to the image of his son, then all things work for the good. All of them, no matter what. Good, bad, they work for the good. That whole chapter, Romans chapter 8, I held strong to that. It was a promise. I had to stay rooted. See, like the sower, some seed was planted on the rocky places, right? Which represented what? Trials and tribulations. Some receive it with joy. And as soon as that happens, the trial and the tribulation, forget God. Everyone... See, I had a brother, a good buddy of mine, a great friend, man of God. He told me two things happen when the fire of God touch your life. True faith comes or fake faith. True faith or fake faith when you get put in that fire, in that furnace. 
you're getting forged, you're getting beat, bam, hammered, but you come out, a sharp weapon, a sharp sword, ready to do damage, ready to push the king, I'm and took some effort on my part, to have a clear mind, to be rooted, to stick with Jesus, to not let anything, anybody get in my way. I knew God had a plan on my life. Why am I still breathing? Why am I still here? To further his kingdom. To do this, to, to do local ministry, to go out with my brothers once again and, and push the kingdom on, on world missions. Just go out and, and give people help. If you have any form of godliness and you believe in the Bible and you believe Jesus is king, it is written, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, in heaven, on earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So whether you serve him or not, he's Lord. I'm not here today to tell you make him your savior. I'm here to say make him your Lord. Something to think about. Shalom.